Hey, what's up you guys? You're watching Team APS, Paul here. In today's video, I'm going to share some buying tips for new or returning Yu-Gi-Oh players. Um, it's something that I feel everybody kind of asks about like, hey, I want to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh, what do I need to buy? How much should I spend? Where should I get stuff? And so I have just a few tips. I've basically only got three, but there are three very good, broad, general tips, and I'll try to explain each one as best as I can. So this is for all of the new players or returning players. The first tip is new kind of beats old with Yu-Gi-Oh. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you're getting back in and you're just wondering like, what do I need to buy to get up to speed with the game? It almost always is gonna be new products. New products are the most meta relevant. New products are the most accessible if you're just kind of buying from stores like Target, you know, Walmart, Toys R Us. Oh wait, never mind. And uh, also, new cards will, I think, do the best job of getting you like into the game as it is now. So, for example, what that would currently be would be like buying Extreme Force or Circuit Break, Spirit Warriors. Kind of these recent decks and stuff like that. You know, if you want a starter deck, maybe the Wave of Light structure deck or um, that type of thing. Basically, things in the last maybe six months, nine months are good investments because Yu-Gi-Oh moves very quickly. And if you're new to the game, you might have heard of a term called power creep. What it basically means is that all the old cards will kind of gradually get less and less viable because new cards are a little bit stronger and then like each year the cards kind of get a little bit stronger the effects get better decks get faster and more consistent the average strength of monsters and their effects tends to increase so what that means is that if you wanted to play a really really old deck um it tends not to work so you know if you're like a super retro player that might be a kind of a vanilla normal monster type of deck it's not really going to cut it and even if you're maybe say coming back from the 5D's era where, you know, synchros were kind of a big deal and you want to play something like Black Wings. Even that, uh, it, it's been kind of power crept. A lot of those effects and just the way the deck operates isn't up to speed with uh, the game. No pun intended. But yeah, so I would always recommend buying newer packs. They tend to be worth more. Like if you're looking to kind of get packs for the sake of pulling valuable cards, then generally speaking, uh, the stuff that you can move quickly is going to be cards from newer sets. Like right now, if you were to buy a box of Extreme Force, pulling something like Saryu Skull Dread or Heavy Metal Foes Electromite would be like very worth your money. And by the same token, even something like Circuit Break, there's Borlo Dragon, and there's like Evenly Matched. So each set tends to have two or three kind of high dollar money cards that if you pull them, you could sell them and get, you know, a fair bit of money, probably recoup the money from a box if you bought that. Or, uh, you know, you could keep it and trade it and, you know, get some cards like that instead of selling it. So generally speaking, I recommend buying new stuff. The best new products right now, I kind of mentioned a few earlier, but just to make a quick list, is Extreme Force, which is one of the main series boosters. It's the most recent as of me making this video. Um, Circuit Break and Code of the Duelist. Those are three main booster sets. And there's also Spirit Warriors, which has like six samurai. That's kind of a cool concept for people who might be coming back into the game. They might remember that. And then I'd say Legendary Collection Kaiba. If you can get your hands on it, it's supposed to be easy to get, but like it's been a very popular set, so it might be sold out in places, is a very good investment as well. So uh, those would be my recommendations for that. So the next tip is you should generally buy singles over products, but there are some caveats. So um, like I said, I mean, buying products is cool if you're just trying to get into the game, just get a collection of cards going. Then, you know, buying sealed products, whether that's packs from the store or, you know, boxes or whatever, it's generally fine. But if you're looking to complete a specific deck, like you've kind of chosen the deck you want to make, then I think that buying singles is generally better than buying packs. Because when you buy packs, you kind of run the risk of not pulling the cards you need. If you're running a deck that's kind of low rarity, something like say Crawlers or Ten Dangles or some good recent examples, then buying a box of a set will probably get you everything you need to build those because all those cards are commons and rares. So you'll pull them and see them in like every pack you open. But if you're building something that maybe has a few more expensive cards, you know, stuff that's like ultra rares, secret rares, it'll be hard to pull those from raw packs. So I generally recommend, um, you know, just buying them outright they might be expensive it might cost like 10 or 20 or even 30 dollars 
but it's more reliable to do that than to spend a lot of money buying um, product like packs. And the second tip too involving like what to buy would be, I think that if you're going to buy packs, you should buy them in bulk. Uh, think of a place like Sam's Club or uh, Costco, you know, those like bulk grocery sites where you get a lot of stuff for like less of a price. The same goes for Yu-Gi-Oh booster packs. So with Yu-Gi-Oh, for example, um, a booster pack at like Walmart or Target is going to run you $3.99 generally. But if you buy a booster box online from a site like TCG Player, where did that come from? Um, then a box might cost you $60 or $65, 70 You'll get 24 packs in a box. Normally that would cost you $96 at the store, but if you get a box, you can save like 30, 40 bucks that way. So it's a very good way of getting boxes if that's what you're interested in. And the third final tip is consider how much you want to invest into this game. Consider your player skill level. Is this something that you're getting back into just because like you saw some friends playing it and brought back memories? You know, do you just kind of plan to play with a group of friends or maybe just play locally like at a local card shop every weekend or two? If that's the case, I recommend not spending a whole, whole lot on the game. I say, you know, try to build maybe a cheaper deck. Some examples, like I said, were Crawlers or, um, you know, Tin Dangles. There are also some other cheap ones. Altergeists, Metaphys, Rockets. A lot of those cards, um, or decks rather, are new and pretty easy to get a hold of. Now, as for expensive cards, there are going to be some that you need, but I think that if you aren't planning to take your game to the next level, going to regionals, which are like larger tournaments or YCS events, it makes it doesn't make as much sense to invest, you know, 30, 40, 50 dollars into these expensive cards. For example, a really powerful link monster, sort of boss monster right now that a lot of decks can use, is Saryuya Skulldred. But it costs about 50, 60 dollars, kind of depending on where you look. It's unlikely that you'll pull it, and if you do, that's great. But to buy it outright, I don't think is really worth it if you're on a budget. Uh, you can make do with other Link monsters, and it just doesn't make sense to spend a lot of money on a game that you really might not see the return from. Now, if you are a true enthusiast, I don't want to dissuade anybody from you know like buying cards they like because they look cool or whatever, and they have the money to spend, but I just don't recommend doing it. If you're just trying to get back in the game and get in the swing of things, maybe not so much. And those are three tips that I feel are really, really good just for getting back into the game. So as a quick recap, new products tend to be better than old products. Buying single cards tends to be better than buying product if you're looking for specific stuff. And you should always consider your competitive level. If you're playing locally, don't spend too much. Don't worry too much about it. If you're trying to go to the national level, then yeah, it probably is going to take some money. All right. That's the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you like videos like this, share it with your friends, subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! I'll see you guys in the next one.